In your calculus classes, you encountered initial value problems. An ordinary differential equation supplemented with some conditions to determine the unknown constants. In these problems, the conditions were usually given at one point, often at x equals zero. However, when we are going to solve partial differential equations later, we will encounter so-called boundary value problems in the process. In a boundary value problem, the conditions are not given at one point, but at more points. Does that matter? Well, let us see. Here we have four problems. An initial value problem, where both conditions are given at zero, and three boundary value problems, where the second condition is given at x equals pi. You see they are almost the same, this part is the same for all of them, only the second condition is different. And let us just try to solve them. Well, starting with the first one. So, uh, with this one. So we can write down the general solution. You know how to do it. You get the linear combination of sine x and cosine x. Then we use the boundary conditions. In this case, both at x equals 0. If you plug in x equals 0, you get y of 0 equals 0. So we get c1 times uh, 0 plus c2 times 1. So c2 has to be 0. So then we find y of x equals c1 times the sine of x. And then we use the second condition, y prime of 0 has to be equal to 1. Well, y prime equals c1 times cosine x. If you plug in 0, you get c1, which has to be equal to 1. So c1 equals 1, and we find one solution, y of x equals sine x. Moving on to the second problem. Well, the first part goes exactly the same, of course. So we end up again with y of x equals c1 times sine x. But then the second condition is different. The second condition now is y prime equals pi. Well, y of uh, x equals uh, c1 sine x, y prime equals c1 times cosine x. So y1 of pi equals uh, minus c1, uh, which means that c1 equals minus 1. And now we find y of x equals minus sine x. So again, one solution. So an initial value problem looks very similar now to a boundary value problem. But now we take a look at uh, problem 3. Again, the first part is the same, so we find y of x equals c1 times sine of x, and now we try to impose the second condition. y of pi equals c1 times the sine of pi equals 0. So regardless of what we take for c1, we will always find y1 of pi equals 0. So we can never satisfy the other condition, y of pi equals 1. So in this case, we find no solutions. And finally, the fourth problem. Uh, <coughs> and there we impose y of pi equals 0. Again, the first part is the same. So we find y of x equals c1 times sine of x. Then we impose the second condition. We plug in x equals pi. We always find 0, regardless again of the choice of c1. So our solution equals y of x equals c1 times the sine of x. Where c1 is still free. So in this case, we find an infinite number of solutions. So does it matter that we have a boundary value problem instead of an initial value problem? Yes, it definitely matters, because in a boundary value problem we can find like no solutions, one solutions, or infinitely many solutions. It definitely matters that we have a boundary value problem instead of an initial value problem.